Good day, Grade 12. Welcome to this next lesson in Vertical Projectile Motion. In the last lesson, we spoke about free fall. In this lesson, we're actually going to be discussing vertical projectile motion, where things go up and then come back down. What is a projectile? It's all very well talking about vertical projectile motion, but we need to know what is a projectile. And a projectile is any object that is moving upwards or downwards under the influence of gravity. So it's any object. It could be a ball, a cricket ball, a rugby ball. It could be a rocket. It could be a pen that you throw up and down. Anything that is moving upwards or downwards under the influence of gravity is considered to be a projectile. So let's look at a couple of examples. As you can see here, there's Tiger Woods and he's busy chipping a golf ball out of some sand and that is a projectile. Yeah, we've got a young man who's playing soccer and that is a projectile. Yeah, we've got also a young man, I'm assuming, and yeah, you can see that there are basically couple of types of projectile action okay yeah he's just dropping it so if he's just dropping it it's just going to undergo free fall okay over here it's going up and it's coming down and it's going up and down quite a steep accent okay and over here you can see that it forms a beautiful para parabolic shape and finally yeah this guy who is doing all sorts of cool tricks on his motorbike as he launches off he is actually a projectile and you can see that he's following a beautiful parabolic arc and you need to know that because vertical projectile motion generally is in the form of a parabola So what happens during vertical projectile motion? First of all, vertical projectile motion fo follows a parabolic path where the initial velocity is the velocity at which the object leaves the thrower's hand and that is going to be a maximum. Okay, and remember that velocity is a vector, so we have to give a direction. So this velocity, the initial velocity is upwards and it is as at a maximum. As it goes up, the velocity slows down, okay, until it gets to the top, where the velocity very temporarily equals zero. So if we had to break these motions up into going up and coming down, then this would be the V final of the going up, and that would be zero, okay, and then this would be the V initial of the going down bit, and that would also be zero. So the object momentarily stops at this point here. The object then speeds down as it descends, and then finally at this point here, the final velocity downwards is again going to be a maximum amount. And it's gonna be the same as the initial amount. And the reason for this, for all these actions, is that at all times, the only force that's definitely acting on it is the force of gravity. So there's a force of gravity, we're gonna call it the weight, that is pulling it down. So even the object is accelerating downwards. In this case, it's slowing down because it's been got a net force down, okay? And yeah, it is speeding up and it's because of the same force, the force of gravity that is pulling it down. So yeah, it's also pulling it down, but it's slowing it down. And yeah, it is speeding it up. Okay. Let's look at some data for upward and downward projectile motion. The ball leaves the thrower's hand at 30 meters per second upward. If we choose upward to be the positive direction, this is positive 30 meters per second. As it rises, it slows, losing approximately 10 meters per second every second. This is because it accelerates at the acceleration due to gravity G, which is about 10 meters per second squared downward. So after a second, its velocity is now approximately 20 meters per second upward. In other words, positive 20 meters per second. During the next second, it slows another 10 meters per second. So at the end of second two, the ball's velocity is positive 10 meters per second. During the next second, the ball slows to zero velocity, 
In other words, it stops. Now it turns around and starts moving downwards. In other words, it starts moving in a negative direction. It speeds up by approximately 10 meters per second every second. So by the end of second four, its velocity is 10 meters per second downward, also written as negative 10 meters per second. By the end of second five, its velocity is negative 20 meters per second. By the end of second six, its velocity is negative 30 meters per second. Notice that now the ball is at the same height as it had left the hand. Now the ball falls below the hand's height, still accelerating at 10 meters per second each second. So at the end of second 7, its velocity is negative 40 meters per second. There are many interesting patterns in this data. Can you see them? Notice the upward and downward velocity of the ball at the same height. The magnitudes are the same. So for example, when the ball leaves the thrower's hand, its velocity is 30 meters per second moving upward. We can say a positive 30 meters per second. When the ball moves through the same height on its way down, its velocity again is 30 meters per second, although this time it is moving downward. We can say negative 30 meters per second. There is also an interesting pattern in the time it takes to move from one height back to the same height. For example, it takes three seconds for the ball to travel from the hand up to its highest point. And it also takes three seconds for the ball to travel from the highest point back down to the hand. We call this time symmetry. It takes just as much time for the ball to go up a certain distance as to come back down the same distance. Now, just before we end, we've been using simplified data to help us see the patterns. But remember that the acceleration due to gravity is actually not 10 meters per second squared. Rather, it is closer to 9,8 meters per second squared. So what does the real data of our falling ball look like? Here we have it. Even though the numbers are not as nice to work with, you can see the same patterns in this data. We look again at the upward and downward velocities of the ball at the same heights. And we see again that their magnitudes are the same. And notice the time symmetry. It takes just as long for the ball to rise a certain height as to drop that same height.